Type Tune Tent. I'm Tom Kranz. My guest today is one of the biggest names in stand-up comedy in New Jersey. Big Mama lives up to her name in energy, talent, and heart. Her signature style is brash, honest, and a little in your face, but as you'll see, it comes from a place of positivity and love. Do you like big black women? <laughs> Speakers, jerseys, all that shit. PSPs. You want to come home with me? I'm joined right now by a Big Mama, who is a big deal here in New Jersey for sure. But I don't know quite as much as I need to know about where else you go. You told me recently you just got back from New Orleans, but I know you've performed in New York as well. Tell me, uh, yeah. first of all, what's your What's your platform? Will you go anywhere in any place or are you basically anywhere, a Jersey girl? Any place. I perform internationally. I performed in Jamaica. Uh, um, I performed in Cancun. Um, a lot of them were cruises. So I was able to go and be able to perform on the cruises that I was on, that I was booked to perform on. And then a lot of them were uh, groups that were like, hey, we want to have entertainment. So. Wow. Entertainment. So you get How long have you been doing this? 11 years. Really? And what did you do before? Yeah, let me ask you this first. Do you have a day job or is this you? This is. Oh, you. no, I got a full time job, honey. God has not told me yet to quit this job. So I am, in fact, celebrating my two year anniversary of my job. Um, prior to that, I had another job in public in the public sector. I was there for four years, going almost like five years. And then I left to, um, on to, you know, bigger <laughs> things or whatever. And um, and I'm that's where I'm at now. But no, I have a full time job. So you work full time and then you do a lot of performing. I mean, I've just went through your Facebook and your Instagram. It's like, do you ever sleep? It almost seems like you're performing almost I mean, every I night. I don't think I'm busy enough. I, if I could yeah. perform three to four times a week, you know, keep that mo keep that mojo going, I would love it. Wow. Are you a mom also? I'm a mom and I'm a grandma. Wow. You're a grandma. You look too young to be a grandma, but you know, what the hell? Do Thank I you. You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Are you Except these gray hairs that are busting through the front? If there's anything you can edit, if you can make these <laughs> black, I, I would appreciate it. But otherwise, it's not right. I'll I don't want to change a hair on your head. I like you exactly the way you are. So All right, um, we'll are you, keep, we'll keep it. are you taking care of children or are they, he, he or she, are they on their own? Uh, no, my grandson comes home, comes here every day because he goes to school. Uh, okay. GTA. So you're but, also. Um, my daughter, she's 27. She's going to be 28. So you have a grandchild who you also kind of take care of. Yes, so you I have do. lots going on. I listen, I have a sick mom who's a little ill. Um, it's funny because prior to now, on these years, like I would be ripping and running for her, do what she needs me to do, and still like, okay, now let me go home and get ready for a show. Gotcha. Wow. All right. So I think Big Mama, when people hear the name and they see your shirt and they see you, I think they get it immediately. Um, so I first met you at a show you did in Scotch Plains, New Jersey, which is the town next to me. I'm in Fanwood. You did okay. uh, part of a three comedian night at a place called Savory Selections. And the minute you the minute you were introduced by our friend Mr. Direct and you walked in, you filled the space. You are kind of a force of nature, uh, both physically and personality wise. You are when you are there, you are there. And I think I really love that about you. And I think people love that about you, too. Did you just wake up one day 11 years ago and say, this is what I'm doing and this is how I'm doing it? No, I, I, they, they, I'm known as the firecracker of comedy. We'll say that. And as you know, firecrackers are big and loud and exciting. And that's me. Um, I started, I want to say, I don't want to call it a dare, but my homegirls and I were out. We were at this um, place that we have in our town called The Temple. And they were doing comedy every night, every Thursday. So they had the good, the the the, the OGs, like um, talent would be down there. Um, Oh, Hamburger. I don't know why. And I love hamburgers. I don't know why I can't think of his name. But <laughs> Hamburger was <laughs> down there. Uh, Brother Man from the Fifth Floor was down there. TK Kirkland. All the people that are, that are up and out here now are, have all come through the temple. And this one night, my homegirls was like, girl, you funny in this one. He wasn't even funny. This one was that. This one. So I was like, oh, whatever. And then 
So then the next thing you knew, they called the guy over and was like, our friend wants, uh, our friend's going to do the next show. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So, and then that was that. And did well, you? Said I've been funny all my life, like in all my jobs that I've always had, like I've always been the one to keep everybody's spirits up, keep the vibe going. So that's been it. So that was my next question. Your inspiration. I, I don't know about you. I consider doing stand up an art. I could never do it. Uh, I've talked, I've, I've heard a lot of other comedians basically say the same thing, but it takes a certain kind of person to do it. Somebody who is maybe quick on their feet, you know, quick with wit, with wit and with, with a sense of humor. So you've always been funny, even as a little girl. Um, I, I, I would assume so. I mean, I was always uh, getting into trouble, getting grounded, doing stuff I had a business doing. So I guess that fell into now I can do it on stage and nobody can not say nothing. And then they pay you on top of that. Yeah. How great is this life? I know, absolutely. Um, this when... is my, this is my, what do I want to call? This is my therapy. You know how people pay the copay and research the book for a psychiatrist? Nah, I just bring it all to the forefront. So the minute you get on stage, you feel at home. Yeah, you know, well, some days, you know, you're nervous. You, uh, well, they're always nervous. But um, because you never know what to expect. What you might find funny, three people next to you might be like, what is he laughing at? It's not even funny. You know what I'm saying? So. You have to be able to command your crowd, know what kind of crowd you have, and be able to give them what they came for, which is laughs. Now, you're going to get those people that are like, come out and be like, <laughs> and those are the people you look at like, what did you come outside for? Why, why, why you came outside? To ruin it for the rest of us? Like, really? Like, put a smile on your face. Think about something. So, those people, you got to work out them a little harder, but I still appreciate them as well. Cool. So the the show that I saw you at, the audience was a very mixed audience. We had black folks, there were white folks, there were, I think my wife and I were probably among the oldest people there, but there were people of different ages. And of course, as a basic kind of old school white dude, there was quite a bit of the comedy that was kind of over my head a little bit. And that's okay, because there was plenty there to me to have me laugh my ass off along with my wife. Do you um, find that your audiences are generally diverse? Or are you, do you go towards, are, are you more uh, accustomed to, do you get more jobs in front of black audiences or not necessarily? It doesn't matter to me. I don't, it doesn't matter. Um, I did a competition a long time ago, Sea Caucus. The whole room was white. Hmm. The only black people there were my 11 black friends. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like to me and that not only does not matter, go ahead, it doesn't matter I to won you, the competition. But... And I'm, I believe it. And I'm guessing that uh, not only does the audience not matter, but I'm guessing you would think that good, you know, if you're funny, that's universal, right? Yeah. You know what? You got to talk about things that are relatable. Credit, kids, life, breakups, makeups, bills, car troubles, sex. Uh, I don't really touch on politics too much because I ain't got time to be going back and forth with people. Sure. But um, talk about life, period. People want to hear, like, listen. What you, what I may have cried about, I'm going to share with you now, and you're going to laugh at it. And I'm going to laugh now, too, because now whatever it was, I got over, and now I can laugh about it. And that brings me to uh, another thing I noticed about your stand-up, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, you do a lot of self-deprecating humor, right? And that's the same kind of thing that Chris Rock does. He talks about his kids, and his dysfunctional, this and that. And, you know, I guess... When you talk about yourself and you talk about your own vulnerabilities, that's what brings people in. You know, that's certainly what brought me in. And that's why I thought you were great. If you're able to get up there and talk about the things that, you know, look you in the eye each day that challenge you, that's funny, you know, because everybody can relate to that, as you said. Always, always. I I mean, I, I can't get up there and talk about the Kardashians because I don't know a damn thing about them. I know they started from a sex team. But besides that, I don't know <laughs> before that I don't know nothing about those women. You know what I'm saying? So sure. I got to talk, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I talk about like current events, things that go on and you know, that we, that, Hey, it's something that just came out of news. Like right now, my summer body has to compete with Martha Stewart's 81 year old summer body who <laughs> is just like intact. And I got to get all this into that same baby suit she has. Like that is my goal for the summer. Whether I'm going to look the same or not, but you know, you, you, you see current events, whatever you want to talk about, you want to speak on. So I couldn't believe Martha Stewart's 81. When did that happen? For God's sake, I saw that picture. I think she's really? messing around with Snoop Dogg. Cause ain't no way she <laughs> looked that young. That young. And, and she didn't even got a wrinkle in the middle, a wrinkle on the side. Like, 
Get out of here. I know. Yeah, really. I don't, don't want to have to compete with people like her. And it's, well, I yeah, think I she's had. I think she's had some work done too. I don't know. Yeah, and now I got to compete with Martha, who's eighty-one, <laughs> who will probably snatch up the man that I probably want. <laughs> so another two more things that I wanted to ask you about. So, um, like many comics, um, you speak in the language of the people. You know, the words come out, and some of them are a little rough around the edges. But the thing that I recall when I watched, for example. Again, Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock, George Carlin, you know, when they use profanity, it never bothered me because it's funny. You know, as long as it's funny, I think mm-hmm. people get it because people either talk that way or they want to desperately. And that was what I found about your act, too. You you know, you talk a little bit like you're from the street a bit, but it's funny. And that's what I think separates somebody like you from somebody who just gets up and curses for 20 minutes. I don't even want to hear that myself. I went to something the other day and this man was talking about God knows what. And when he was done, I mean, we knew he was talking about, but when he was done, we all felt so violated. Like, what the hell just happened? Did this man just pee on us? Because that's how it felt. His humor was horrible. Uh. It was horrible. And we were like, what was it? It was two police officers that were over to the corner. So my homegirl, who was the host, was like, "Um, officers, Officers, they were like, yeah, do you want to arrest him? Because we think he just admitted to some stuff that <laughs> nobody knew, nobody oh, didn't know about, but I think he just admitted to some crimes. Like, you got to know your audience. And even, like, I perform in churches uh, for women's groups and everything. You got to know your audience. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, uh, clean comedy, dirt, whatever. I have some people that are like, oh, I'm just a clean comedian. If you want to put yourself there, you can. Uh, I, I don't want to put myself in that box. I would have put myself in no box. Whatever you want. I've done weddings. I've done baby showers. I've hosted all types of events. So I don't ever want to be just placed in one place that this is all you can do because that's going to limit my talent. And I, my talent is limitless. Absolutely. Do you, I've talked to many other types of artists. I've talked to musicians, writers, a couple of photographers. And I find that one thing many of them have had in common is that a lot of their art, a lot of their talent uh, has a, some roots in pain that happened in their life, right? Getting over some kind of a trauma. Maybe they were bullied. Maybe they were this, maybe they were that. Do you have that in common as well or no? Um, I can barely remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. <laughs> so to go back down a deep rabbit hole to wonder if who, I I, I, who, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't even answer that. I mean, please, and I was just thinking my other girl, we were bullies back when we were kids. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I enjoy comedy for what it is, for what it does, for what joy it brings to the person sitting there, um, to the way it inherit, it had the way it makes my cash app go off and uh, my bank account go up, uh, the trips that I get to go on, the different people I get to meet. That's why I enjoy it. So I don't. I mean, who knows if there's some dark rooted secret? Maybe years from now I'll write a book about it out the black hole, but more than likely I won't. <laughs> Well, I don't want you to go and digging for something that's not there. Yeah, I don't want to. And I'm not one for that. I want, I'm not a, oh my God, tap into your, I got time to tap into the, no, I'm going to tap into life right now. Dear God, my boy, uh, with all due respect, um, the new set of men that you uh, put out here is not your best work. It's not your best work. More with Big Mama in just a moment. It's time to grab your beach reading. Your great escape is waiting at TomCransBooks.com. Contemporary fiction in the Bud and Maggie series, sci-fi adventure in the Earth Moon Rescue series. Visit TomCransBooks.com for detailed descriptions and links to the ebook, paperback, hardback, and audiobook editions. That's TomCransBooks.com. You deserve a great escape. Are you from New Jersey? I am. I'm from Somerset, New Jersey, Franklin, New Jersey. Uh, and uh, my mom still lives there. Um, I actually still live in Franklin myself. I moved away years ago to live in Pennsylvania for like a year, but that was a, a god awful decision. Like uh, at that time, gas was $20 a gallon. So I stayed there mm. one year and brought my ass right on back. What is your favorite ve- kind of venue to play? The, the one where I saw you, there were maybe. I don't know, 50 people or so having dinner. And it was very informal. It was very cozy. Everybody was kind of yeah, right there in funny. your face. 
Is that, do you like the, do you like that kind of uh, that environment or do you prefer a bigger house? I like to be able to see you. Okay. I like to be able to know that I can reach out. If I want you to touch my stomach and show how my food was going down. Like I, I love the intimacy. I love it in a big arena too, because those first, that first row was going to get everything I got as far as that closeness. Um, the others will be laughing, but you know, they're, you're going to get it because I can see you. So I do like, a, I love, I love, I love an environment where, you know, like I'm like, turn the lights up a little bit. I want to see, because I want to see who's in here. You know what I'm saying? My husband could be in there and I don't know it because I can't see it. <laughs> so uh, I, at the job that I saw you at, um, you made a lot of, you, there was a lot of interaction with individual audience members. Uh-huh. And I think that was part of, part of what you're talking about right now. That's, that seems to enhance your performance, right? It's it's fun when you get to deal with the audience. I mean, of course you come up there with an agenda or what your what your what your um your set is gonna be, but come on. We we were in someone's living room kitchen slash house. Like I love that. Like he kept telling me don't go to the front door. So before I came, he was like, don't go to the front door, go to the front door. So I called my other guy and I'm like, what kind of nonsense is he what do you mean don't go to the front door? But as I showed you guys couldn't come to the front door because I would have walked right into the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a riot, actually. Um, all right, yeah. let's talk about Liquor Run. I just saw that the trailer has been released. It says the movie's coming out in August. Is that what I read? August 13th, August 13th. We're gonna so Liquor run. run, tell me about that movie and how did you get that part? So Liquor Run, I'm in a starring role. I play a girl named Lala. She's um, the girl from the hood with her homeboys, and they are trying to do them a party, and everything you can think of, not think of, is going to go wrong in this liquor run. So um, it's my guy, uh, Cornelius, and he has the old, old Paul Mills Network they have, um, and they've, been, they've done quite a few projects. So he's actually from here, uh, Cornelius, from Somerset, so he wanted to shine some shine on us here in Franklin, you know, a movie from here. So he's done a lot of movies, uh, other pro- projects elsewhere, like in the North Tri-State areas or whatever. But this will be a more reflection on us here at in Franklin. I'm excited. It's myself. A few other comedians are actually in the movie. So that's what's going to make it funny. So what was that like? Was it fun? Was it scary? Was it, it did was you have fun. to memorize uh, lines and stuff? Fun. It was um, hmm. crazy at times. Uh, lost some sleep. Um, but it was all, it, it, it was fun. Like I saw the trailer the other day. I was like, Oh, I look good. Look at me on that trailer. <laughs> yes, so you do. I've done another, um, web series that's called, um, risk the life of Florida Sabrina. I'm on Tubi. Shout out to me. Um, <laughs> Tubi's one of the apps that like, if you, it, it's like one of the black folk apps, but they got other kind of, they got all kinds of movies on there, but I'm on it. So that's what I'm excited about. Uh, um, I did another movie a few years ago called What Death Do We Part? I played a wife uh, of um, who my husband was just getting on my damn nerves. So, but this one here, this one here, as Fat Joe says, today's price, yesterday's price ain't gonna be today's price. So I'm you. excited about that. I cannot wait. Like, I'm still trying to lose all of this in the middle so that I could show up to the red carpet looking like God knows what. Outstanding. Is this movie going to be for a theatrical release or is it for streaming? Do you know any of that stuff? I don't know yet. I know I'm going to, it's it's giving us a movie credit because of the way they're going to release it or whatever. It's going to be at the Shaquille O'Neal Theater in Newark, New Jersey, Mm -hmm. uh, where they released a lot of uh, major productions. So we're glad to be a part of that as well. Did you have to learn lines? Did you have to like memorize a script? I did quite a bit, quite a bit. Um, I had to cry a little bit. I had to be a little emotional. Um, uh, I pretty much though, I got to be myself. Like I'm hanging with my homeboys and you jerks are getting on my nerves. Cause now we got problems. So I had fun. So you could do some of your own thing. You improvised to some extent. A little bit. I did. I got to, I got to, um, you know, they want you pretty much, you know, you stay on script, stay on task. Cause everybody's got their lines, you know, a movie with a bunch of comedians, everybody want to try to be funny at the same time. Yeah, of course. So, when you get your chance, you get your chance. So I had a good time. I enjoyed it. Well, I look forward to seeing it. I'm sure I, the trailer listen, was cool. Come on, listen. Come on out to the red carpet. Uh, listen. There's got to be a premiere, time, right? It's going to be amazing. Cool. And what else do you have going on? I have to go to Cancun in August. I'm going to perform in Cancun again. Uh, you have to go to Cancun. Oh, what a chore that must be. 
Yes, I cannot wait. <laughs> Uh, I really appreciate you spending this time with me. Uh, that half hour oh, went by really you. quick. And uh, I'm going to look forward to Liquor Run, the movie. And the movie. Big Mama, we're going to see you every place. Tell us about your Facebook page, website, any other place where people yes. can find you. So my Instagram is B-I-G-M-O-M-M-A, badass, 2012. For my website, it's Big Mama Make Some Laugh. Dot com. So it's, 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 it's long. Um, I have my videos on there. Uh, I'm on Facebook. It's Big Mama Badass fan page. Um, Your Instagram and, page is huge. I do everything. got, everything's I do. on everything's on Instagram, right? Pretty on much. the web page. Yeah, on the Instagram. I do everything. I do bar mitzvahs, breakups, makeups, weddings. If you need laughter, I am your girl. Right. I, and you need laughter every day because there's so much stuff going on. It's enough to make us cry. But laughter yeah. is something you desperately that good gut laughter that makes you roll back and forth, I'm your girl. Absolutely. And on that note, I'm going to say thank you for joining me and uh, good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. Lord, if you let me get skinny one more time, I promise I won't mess it up. Hi, folks. Tom Kranz here. I appreciate you tuning in to my podcast, Type Tune Tint, and I especially appreciate those of you who have subscribed. Uh, I started this subscriber thing in July of 2024, really just as a way of uh, recouping a little bit of the costs of doing this uh, podcast. There's website hosting and there's uh, WordPress editions, and occasionally I buy a book so that I can actually know what I'm talking about when I interview an author. Uh, you can subscribe to this podcast for as little as $3 a month. Uh, comes off your credit card uh, automatically, and for $3 a month, you get the satisfaction of knowing that you're helping keep this uh, podcast going. I'm in my fifth year now, but also I will occasionally offer exclusive content just for subscribers. So uh, give it a give it a shot. Um, I appreciate you taking the plunge. You can unsubscribe anytime you want. If you have any questions or comments, of course, you know how to get in touch. So please subscribe, and uh, I appreciate it. Thanks.